Okay. All right. So welcome to this week's edition of the Business Owners Mastermind Call. My name is John Pyron, the business doctor. I am your host and my co-host here, Alan Reeves with Mouse Calls Online. Say hello, Mr. Alan Reeves. Good day, everyone. How are you? So um, let's see your co-host here. Um, mute that, mute that. Okay. <clears throat> so, dude, um, it's the last day of the month. It's the last day of the quarter, last day of the first half of the year. And you and I have been working together for a little over five years. And, and what do we normally do at the end of every quarter? Uh, party at your house. <laughs> Yeah, besides that, what do we do? Well, basically, I mean, you 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 have a recap and figure out, you know, where we went wrong and what we did right and uh, fix all of the above. It's a, in the, in the IT world, it's called a quarterly business review. And uh, it doesn't have to, it can, it can apply to any business, you know, any any sort of growth or strategic relationship. Um, you, you, you know, if you're not measuring something, you can't change it. You know, mm -hmm. So, um, so it's all about it's all about metrics. Uh, it's all about KPIs and uh, where are we deficient and where are we strong and uh, how do we how do we uh, improve what we need to. Mm -hmm. That is exactly correct. And um, since you are a client of mine, you uh, got this document. Let me share my screen here real quick. Boom. Well, everybody can, and I'll, I'll give this document to anybody who wants it, by the way. Um, a pretty much quarterly business review. So this is something that I do with my own business, with all of my one-on-one -on -one clients, is we go through this document and it helps us set clear objectives and parameters for this next quarter. And so it's the areas that you need assistant, you know, what are the items that you need help with in the next uh, 60 minutes? Typically I set these calls for an hour. What are the biggest uh, crises on their hands? Then we do an executive update. What is the year to date revenues uh, versus the previous quarter? What are the operating expense percentages from the previous quarter? What is the EBITDA? And for those of you that are not familiar with EBITDA, it's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It is the single most important metrics that people use for the value of a company or a business. It's not the only metrics, but it is one of the most important when somebody is looking at investing in your business or buying your business, or you're interested in knowing what, you know, if I chose to sell today, uh, what would it be worth? So I uh, encourage uh, my clients to look at this pretty much every time we talk and every quarter for sure. So we can make sure that we're on track for our goals and objectives for this year. Then we go over the key issues. Then we go over the business plan update. All business plans that I do are a one page plan, object, uh, vision, mission, objective, strategies, and action plans. And we go over the objectives. Where are we at for the current year? Are we on track to hit the goal by the end of the year? Are we way behind? Or in some cases, a couple of my clients right now, they're they're going to knock out this year's objectives in September. They're they're on track to do it again, and so we're not going to change those objectives at this point. But the only time I would ever change a, an annual objective is is in at this mid year. You know, if we're just absolutely there's just absolutely no way we're going to hit that objective. Um, you know, uh, there's two schools of thoughts don't ever change the objective or modify the objective based on the conditions. Like last year was a great example. Nobody anticipated COVID when January came around when we were planning out the annual objectives. And you can have all the optimism you want in the world, but a lot of companies had to change their objectives for the year. Then the strategies, what worked? What worked in the previous quarter? What do we need to do in this next quarter? Um, what worked, what didn't work, what needs to be modified, what needs to be, you know, shit canned and, and gotten rid of. What are those objectives? Then we look at sales and marketing. We always look at sales and marketing. What are we going to do over this next quarter? What happened? What were the major wins and losses in the, in the previous quarter? What were the notable items in the second quarter? And what's the third quarter pipeline look like? And then other things that we discuss. 
what were the results of the second quarter goals? Always make sure that we have three to four top goals that we're focused on on a quarterly basis. And so what were the results of those goals? What are the three third quarter goals? What does that person need help in? Okay. We look at their leadership plan. How are they doing as a leader? How are they doing in their life plan? How are they doing in their legacy plan? Uh, any personal news, work-life balance, uh, family news, work-life balance. What are the market trends and conditions? What are the market conditions and opportunities and challenges? And those are the components of a really good, solid quarterly strategy plan. Now, the four people that are on this call today happen to be strategic partners. And so I'm going to give everybody a minute here to share specifically what your company is, what it is that you do, uh, what value do you bring to small business owners? And then the four of us are going to strategize and mastermind and how we're going to help each other over the next 90 days to grow each other's business, leverage each other's networks, and, and really just make a whole lot more money and have a bigger impact in this next quarter. So with that said, uh, let me start off with my beautiful wife, Allison. Lord. Hi, guys. I uh, hope everyone is well. Um, so I'm in the process of beginning a uh, virtual assistant business. Um, as you know, for the example, Elton was saying earlier that he has a client that is now moving from a off-site location to their home office. And so a lot of people are now doing that uh, since COVID has happened. And so um, I see the opportunity of going out there and helping these business owners with jobs that do not um, sit high on their priority because it's nothing that they, they enjoy doing. Um, and so uh, I just see that there's a fit out there. This is kind of the right time to do it. Um, I have been in the customer service, outside sales, inside sales positions um, for over 15 years. And so customer service, I've had over 30 years experience. Um, and so um, for me, it is about going out there and supporting that small business owner who, um, you know, can delegate some of those, some of those list items um, that they don't enjoy doing. And so with my experience um, and with trying to get a team together, uh, I think it's going to be a huge opportunity out there. And so it's gonna be partnering with, with people like you um, to get this thing up and running because uh, you know I think you all can think of a, a list of items that you just don't enjoy doing. And so to be able to pass that task off onto somebody remotely, um, I think there is a huge benefit out there. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Alan Reeves. So my first company, the one I started in 1998, when I was about five years old, um, is Mouse Calls Technology Solutions. Um, it is an outsourced IT service provider, as well as cybersecurity solutions uh, that has uh, two books of business. We do consumer and commercial slash nonprofit. Uh, we have uh, clients in 26 states. We have a churn rate that is vastly lower than uh, any of really any competitor that I know. Um, our clients are very, very uh, excited and uh, about being with us. They evangelize us. And uh, I, that, that's, that's a cultural thing that's been endemic to us for a long time. And uh, it, it's been a long road and a lot of work to, to get there. I've got a, you know, a great team uh, across the board that, that buy into the vision. The second company I have creates value-added services for IT service companies. Uh, and you know, that's obviously a much more niche uh, vehicle, but uh, it keeps me very, very busy every day. And uh, that's why I say every problem I have is a good one and every day I wake up is a great one. So it's 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 all it, it's all in the game absolutely love it uh elton well i've uh i've been doing it since about 92 or 93 you know our first since i got into it i loved it now you know, i'm starting up my own company and trying to help out any business 
small business from 10 to 300 employees or so, if not more. You know, uh, working with uh, you, John, trying to get this uh, started and going. And, uh, you know, just any, anywhere from designing, deploying, or maintaining a network, you know, uh, can do it all. Awesome stuff, man. And um, for those of you that don't know me or listening to the recording, John Pyron, uh, the business doctor. I've been building companies for 30 years, uh, seven companies of my own that I've built. And currently I uh, consult and direct over 12 companies uh, simultaneously. So every single week I'm dealing with anywhere from 12 to 15, maybe 20 new business problems uh, every single week, times 52 weeks. Times all the years since 2014, I've been doing this. So the amount of experience that I bring to the table for any business owner anywhere in the country is, uh, I don't know what to say, man. Uh, you should talk to me if you're a business owner. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it will be a well worth your time. So with that said, let's talk about uh, the four of us, because the way I look at it is this. Alan Reeves has a company called Mouse Calls. Mouse Calls focuses on the solo entrepreneur all the way up to the 10, 15, about 10 user range and for well over almost 500 customers after almost 25 years in business. They know and they absolutely are geniuses at the solo entrepreneur, small business, micro business owner. So companies that are in between startup and typically about $1.52 million a year in revenue. Elton has a company where he focuses on the 25 to 500 user space. So we're talking more enterprise companies that are 10, 15, $20 million and above, and has been doing that since before the internet. Um, Allison, incredible skill set from a customer service standpoint, um, administrative assistance standpoint, but more importantly, the way that this company has been designed is the culmination of multiple uh, people that have specific specialty skill sets in, in the areas of bookkeeping, accounting, operations management, um, all the different things and different aspects that you as a business owner do not want to do or that you want to outsource, or you're at a point where should I hire? Should I subcontract? You know, what should I do? And this is the type of company that's being built. Perfect timing because there is a lot of professional men and women that do not want to come back to the office, do not want to go back to work. Um, they want to stay at home and work from home and leverage their skill sets. So we decided to launch and build a company that's going to, you know, fulfill that need. And then for me, it's strategy, execution, planning, and accountability. And the business doctor, exactly what it says. It's like going to a doctor, pretty much 90% of the problems that you come to me with, no problem. I can give you a prescription and diagnose it. The other 10 to 15%, I've got lots and lots of specialists in my network and on my team that can help you solve pretty much any business problem. So if you're in a startup mode all the way up to a million bucks, that is my favorite sweet spot to work in. Absolutely love that uh, that journey because and and very specifically, you uh, this is your first business. You're not a serial entrepreneur. That's kind of the parameters because every step that you go down that road, you've never been down, and and I've been down it many times. And so I absolutely love the journey, being the guide, being the the person that guides you down that road. And then when you get to that one to five million space, it's a whole different animal. You got management team to worry about. You got employees to worry about. 99% of the problem, you, the owner, are the problem. And so you got to get that head that mindset correct in order to scale to the next level and have a whole another team that deals with that. So that's the skill sets that all of us bring to the table. So let's kind of uh, talk amongst ourselves here. What is it? When you look at Q2, I'm going to throw this question out here and, and any of you can jump in at any time. And I know Elton, you're just, you're just starting. So when you look at the past 90 days, if it makes sense to talk about it, because Elton, I understand that you're, you're just getting started, right? What are the biggest lessons that you learned over the last 90 days in business? I think, uh, 
one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that, you know, when you're in startup mode, you are the face of your company, you and you alone. So if you're not out there, you know, selling yourself, you're not selling your company. And so if you're not moving, your company is not moving. I think that's one of the uh, biggest lessons that I've learned so far. Okay. Allison. One of the biggest things I've learned so far. One of the biggest things you've learned over the last 90 days as um, it relates to your business. Um, honestly, the thing that I'm hearing the most is a business owner wanting to let go. Okay. Going to let go in, in terms of. In trusting someone else with their business. Yeah. 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 I said in the, uh, this office uh, yesterday, new client, we just uh, negotiated an agreement today. And the, the company has been in business for 22, going on 23 years. Great, great couple. Great couple. Um, but they're at that stage where they want to expand their business to the point where it can run by itself. And one of the top challenges is letting go of control is the old i just don't trust anybody to do it the way i do it right those were the words that came out of his mouth and i go i get it man i get it it's every every small business owner um goes through that that phase in that stage and it's like uh, Robert Kiyosaki wrote a book called uh, Cash Flow Quadrant. And in the Cash Flow Quadrant, he has uh, employee, uh, which is the E quadrant. The S quadrant is self employed. The B quadrant is business owner. And the I quadrant is the investor. And, and he makes a very unique distinction between the S quadrant business owner and the B quadrant business owner. The S quadrant business owner requires a tremendous amount of the owner's time for that business to make money and survive. The B quadrant business owner, which is where all of us, well, most of us want to get to is a business that we own that we don't have to show up to on a regular basis that we just, we have, we have somebody to maintain it. And so the hardest transition is to hire the right people, uh, bring on the right people, bring on the right talent, and give them the right skills to where ultimately they can run the company without you. And so, um, so I get it. Yeah, a lot of business owners do not want to let go. That is for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean that's the thing you hear is that they have all these great ideas of things that they want to implement and things they want to do and stuff they don't want to do, but then the moment that you ask them, okay, well. Let's try this. It's the one thing that they pull back on. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Alan Reeves, biggest, uh, biggest wins, uh, lessons learned in Q1 or the last quarter Q2. So I will, I'll tell you, you know, this is not, this is not something new that I've learned, but man alive, this is something that is really hammered home. Uh, strongly uh, over the course of the last two to three weeks. And that is nobody's perfect. Okay. But there are a lot of supposedly really good companies out there that are putting out really, really substandard service and product. And I guess where I'm going with this is marketing and sales and image and perception can outweigh or cover up a lot of those blemishes. And, and let me give you, let me give you a couple of examples right off the bat that everybody will understand. They're non-technical. Um, we had a, we had an opportunity and John, you've reached out to this opportunity on our behalf a couple of times. We had a, a very high end dental office as a prospect. And I'm talking, you walk in there and it feels like you're in a, in a spa in Cabo San Lucas. I mean, beautiful brick, brushed aluminum, the nicest light fixtures out there. And this dental office pays an IT provider out of Texas 
to do their IT work because this IT provider only does dental and they're very, very high end and they charge a premium for what they do. Well, we went in there and discovered that the antivirus on the server had not been updated in many months. Backups hadn't run since October of last year and the server hadn't been rebooted in half a year. And we pointed these things out and that dental office has since ghosted us. Now, why? Not because we're, not because we're a bad company, not because, I, I, I believe in my heart of hearts that the reason is that they can't process the fact that they're paying this monthly amount to this premier dental IT company that all the, all the really good dentists use they, they can't believe that that, even though I pointed out to them and showed them, they looked at it with their own eyes. They can't, they, it just doesn't compute. It doesn't compute. How could they let this happen? So, you know, they probably went to them and said, look, uh, you know, this smaller company came in and showed us this stuff. You know, you, you better, maybe either you better fix it or, or, or I, I have no idea what they did. But again, you know, this company charges an absolute premium and advertises in dental publications. I mean, this is their core market, but going in there and seeing that these very, very basics were not happening. Now, yeah. the other flip side of this, now I've been saving it for this call because Elton is going to find himself blown away by this. We have a client that we've had for about a year. And we have known also for about a year that their network closet was a problem. It's, it was an annoyance, but it was a problem because in that network closet, nothing's labeled. The vast majority of things that are in there are not labeled. And just for, just for our folks who aren't into IT, the idea here, and I'm sure you've seen this in a business setting, in a network closet, maybe you have a little port that's labeled port number 21. Well, in some room in your building, there's going to be a data port labeled port number 21. So you know they connect together. There's none of that in this facility. <laughs> I, I, have been, I have been operating under the impression that maybe that, maybe that closet was there that way when they moved in. Maybe that was done by their electrician. Maybe that was done by some, I don't know, who knows, but it's yeah. bad work, bad work, okay? Yeah. I found out yesterday that that was actually done by the company that we took over that account from. And yeah. that company that we took over the account from is supposedly one of the absolute premier IT companies in the state. Mm -hmm. I was blown away by this. Yep. Happens and, all the time, man. And, and uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, when, and, and another thing about this is when they did that work, they were self-sabotaging. You know, for all they knew, they were going to retain this account mm -hmm. uh, for however long. I mean, that, that, <clears throat> that basically is just, you know, they're setting themselves up for failure. But again... So what's the big uh, what's the big lesson that you learned from all this? Well, the big the big lesson is, again, nobody is perfect, mm -hmm. but but even you know if you're going up against if you're going to bid against a company that maybe has a big name or a big marketing budget, maybe they have commercials on TV, maybe they've even got a couple of people out there whose face everybody knows. <clears throat> Never ever ever assume that you're going to lose. Never, ever, ever assume that they're doing a good job. Never, ever, ever assume that they haven't done something just completely awful that you, you know, you can go in there and find them. Every single business, even if you believe or are under the impression that the service you're getting from any vendor or any provider is great, get a second opinion. Gets whether you engage with that person or not, whether you engage with that company or not, whether you keep your existing provider, whether you take that information and go shopping, 
get a second opinion. Yep. Always, 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 always. I mean, and it could be IT. It could be, you know, whatever service that you're buying or you're spending money on is evaluated, you know, and, and even in this situation, it's like, you know, um, you know, that IT company has been out there for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's been plenty of other people um, gone through there and not one person has said, Hey, what the hell's up with this? Right. And all of a sudden we bring in another resource. Elton comes in there. He says, Hey, what the hell is this stuff? <laughs> yeah. And what's this? What's that? You know, here's the thing I learned. It's like when I owned, I've owned now three or four IT companies. I'm not an engineer. So I have to count on the engineer is doing their job. I don't know if they're doing their job. I have no idea. You know, but I do know this. And this applies to not just IT, it applies to uh, a marriage. It applies to uh, the relationship with your kids. It applies to your health, your fitness, your business, everything. Familiarity breeds contempt. Okay. We all, as human beings, want to get into this maintenance mode. It's so much easier just to keep things steady as you go. And the more familiar you are with the environment, the, uh, the less you notice the subtle change. So have you ever been in a situation where you haven't seen somebody in like a year or two years and all of a sudden you, you sink back up and they go, oh my God, dude, you look so much different. Now that could be good, could be bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could go many different ways. But it's the same thing here is um, I th- I've always said this. It's like there is a tremendous amount of money for every IT company on the planet. If they just market, hey, let me give you a second opinion. You know, let me get I already know you're, you know, it's like an Elton space. You know, he's dealing with with companies that are 25 to 300, 500 users. I know for a fact, every single company you're going to go after is using somebody right now. I would be shocked if they weren't. Okay. And so the big selling point there is, and is, Hey, you know what? I already know you got somebody. You probably had a relationship with that person for three, four, five years. But when's the last time you had somebody come in, somebody like me, it's been around since before the internet that has done a tremendous amount of, you know, I can run circles around most engineers and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that that's how much of experience that I've had over the years. When's the last time you had somebody like me come in and give you a second opinion about how everything is set up because you're not an engineer? Well, it's been a, it's been a long time. Oh, okay. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Business Owner. Um, do you have a CPA or an accountant? Yeah. Do you have a bookkeeper? Yeah. Well, why do you have both? Well, because there's a checks and balance in place. Bookkeeper does the day-to-day operation stuff, does the monthly accounting and reconciliations. But if you don't have an accountant come in and audit that, then when you comes time to do your taxes or comes time where there's an audit and they made a mistake, you're screwed. And that's why you do a second opinion. You do a checks and balances. It's the same thing with IT. It's the same thing with, uh, it's like the biggest lesson I learned in Q2 and Q1, and I finally had a conversation with my old mentor, Phil Bristol, the other day, which I'm going to hire his butt probably tomorrow again, is I just go, you know what, dude? I've I've achieved all the goals that I, that I really set out to achieve. Yeah. I, my business is is right where I want it to be. You know, I mean, I've got great clients. I've got this coming in. I've got this coming in. But dude, I, in order for me to be fulfilled, content, happy, it's not even about the money anymore. It's like, I got to push to a higher level. It's like Michael, Michael Jordan. It's like, why did he hire a, a why did he work with a coach, a trainer? I mean, they weren't going to teach him anything about how to shoot the basketball better. Really? 
No, they just pushed his ass a little bit further than he was willing to go on his own. And so I've known Phil since 2006. He was the biggest reason I went, took a company from zero to a million bucks in three years. He was the guy pushing my butt the entire time. I, I hated, I hated working with the dude, to be quite honest, because he just tell me shit that I didn't want to hear, you know? And, and so I finally told him, I said, I need to hire you again uh, for you to specifically do that. You know, I need to take this to another level. And that's really kind of what I want to talk about is, okay, we're going into Q3. It starts tomorrow, right? We go to the end of September 30th. What is the biggest change? You know, and if you feel comfortable sharing it on this call, then fine. But what is the, the biggest thing that, that you would like to focus on um, in the next 90 days? There's several. Anybody want to go first? I'll take it. Go for it. I want to, and, and this is, uh, this is very high level, um, but it's become, you know, apparent to me. Um, I want to be able to turn the volume down. I want to be able to, I want to, on September 30th, I want my distractions, my daily distractions and people knocking on my virtual door through chat or email or phone, what have you. Uh, I would like to decrease that by about 50%. Um, because there's a lot of it that's unnecessary, but also, um, there's, you know, th there have, there have been a lot of, there've been a lot of, of things that have happened over the past month and a half with my business that frankly, uh, if handled differently, could have been completely avoided and mitigated by now. I don't have the time of day to, uh, to, to deal with it. Uh, as they say, you know, uh, it's always, it's always a bad business model when turds roll uphill. <laughs> and, and, um, so that's, you know, that's a, that's a big thing that I want to, that I want to focus on because, you know, John, I was looking at, I was looking at our shared prospects board this morning mm -hmm. and, and looking at the sheer number that's there and thinking to my, I found myself thinking to myself, what if my days could be spent working on only those and also, you know, basically uh, in working on the fishing nets and the size of the fishing nets and the, uh, you know, the, the ways that we go about casting out for prospects and leads? You know, what, what if I could solely focus on those? I will tell you, I will tell all of you that within 20 minutes this morning before nine o'clock central, I had three uh, different project or lead opportunities fall in my lap, just out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because of prior commitments and service related issues and trying to steer uh, staffers, I was not able to immediately execute on any of them. That should have been my first order of business, picking up the phone, picking up the phone. Instead, mm -hmm. there was about a two or three hour delay there. That's not good. No. It's not good. I did talk to them the same day, but you want to just be able to turn on a dime. That's the yeah. agile business. Yeah. And I want to be a more agile organization where I can yeah. focus my energies on what I'm really good at and know that what, you know, what I've brought out there and what I'm bringing to clients is just getting done and will be done properly. And, um, you know, again, I got to hold people to account. You can't take your eyes off the steering wheel at all times, but you know, you, you've got to know that, that your folks are doing exactly what you, what they need you to do or what you need them to do and taking the job to conclusion. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so what I would do with that goal and that objective is say, Hey, this is what I'm going to get accomplished by the end of September 30th. Okay. But more importantly, okay, here's why I want to get this accomplished and here's the benefits and here's the results. If I achieve this goal, here's the benefit of me achieving that goal. You know, and getting really clear about the why of it, because when you get clear of the why of it, then the activity that you have to actually take to get there becomes the easy part. Yeah, uh, because it is a lot of work. In fact, the bigger the goal, 
that you set, the more work that's going to have to encompass. So, uh, Ali, you have any feedback for Alan? Um, no, I think uh, I think that's where you know you can start. You know, I guess when those calls come in or when those emails come in, um, you know, it's trying to prioritizing, <clears throat> just going, okay, this is the this is the avenue that I want to do. And, um, and maybe Cheryl can take on some of those other tasks that are, are, you know, preventing you from replying to those emails or contacting them directly immediately like you want. But I guess it's just retraining yourself um, on what your priorities are, what you think your priorities should be, and implementing those things yourself for you, you know, being more disciplined and saying, nope, this is, this is where I want to go. This is how I'm, I want to do things. And and then, you know, reprioritizing things after that. Mm -hmm. Discipline is definitely a factor. I mean, there's no question about that. Um, and I'm not, I'm not calling myself out for being self-disciplined, uh, but I could certainly, you know, I could certainly be better. Uh, and it just like, you know, just like you were talking about, John, Michael Jordan hired a coach. Tiger Woods has a coach. You know, um, it, it, there's always, always room for improvement and introspection. So I, that's a very, very valid point. I, I never want to fall on the sort of excuses. Um, yeah. You know, with that, with that said, um, that also has to be, that has to be something that's institutional. You know, yeah. uh, I, I was a part of an organization once where uh, my partner my partner did not want to be bothered by the noise, but he took it to an absolute extreme. You know, there, there, two weeks would go by and he wouldn't come into the office. He routinely had 10 to 12,000 unread emails in his inbox. You know, that's, that's, that's not even being a business owner. That's, that's somebody that's essentially retired and collecting a check. Uh, and and that's, that's not who I am. And uh, that's not how you grow a business. Yeah. But, um, but with that said, uh, I can, again, I can always do better, but it has to be, it has to be a scenario whereby uh, my time and what I am doing is respected and appreciated by the staff. So they know that bringing something to me is a special occasion. And one of the ways that you communicate that without communicating it is successfully launching initiatives and landing new clients where they can see that you're growing the business. Now, we did grow last year. We grew during the pandemic, and that was a good thing. But I'll tell you, you know, our, our percentage of growth last year was uh, in the 30s. And uh, it was a very humbling experience to be in Orlando in May this year and hearing Kevin O'Leary say that if you're a tech company and you didn't grow 100% during the pandemic, you're underachieving. And he was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. He was absolutely right. So there's always somebody better. You've always got to set your sights higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's a big part of what I'm going to be doing. Yep. Um, a couple of things I want to point out here real quick is, let me get my screen to where I can share it here. And then I'm going to ask you uh, the same question, Allie, here in a second. But one really good exercise to do today or over the weekend, but definitely before uh, you go back on Monday, is make sure that these are the right ones I'm looking for. And this kind of goes into one of the things that... Uh, I experienced in my own end of the quarter annual planning is I'll send you this document. It just gives you the step-by-step -step instructions, but here's the bottom line. Okay. It's called the four list business systems audit. It's a great time of the year to do an audit of this stuff. And cause I, I found as I was doing my journaling today and yesterday and, and going through my kind of into the quarter, into the, into the month planning, I'm like, I am not going to repeat this quarter. I had a very profitable quarter. I had probably one of the best profitable quarters I've had in a long time. I had great clients to work with, but 
there are certain aspects of my business. I'm like, I am not repeating that. Just not going to do it. You know? And, um, and I don't need to, you know, and, and you're in the same boat, Alan, you got, you got employees, you got staff members and there are things in your business. You absolutely just don't need to do anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think as us, as, as the small business owners, we go, yeah, but nobody does it better than me. <laughs> you know? Nobody, nobody, uh, you know, man, I, I just, I don't know, you know? And so what I've had to do is I had to get back to, okay, what are the business tasks that I do that I personally am responsible for that I'm doing? How much time per week do I spend doing that task? Yep. You know, and then put an X in these columns. I don't like to do it and I'm not great at it. Put an X here. Uh, put an X in here. I like to do it and I'm great at it and I should be doing it because of my role in the company. Then the next question is an X in any one of these, can I delegate it, automate it or outsource it? And one of the things that I have discovered, and the only reason I'm sharing this with you is I went through this exercise over the last 48 hours and I'm going, I'm doing the work that I don't freaking want to do. Yeah. What do I want to do? You know, and so I sit down and I go, okay, what am I great at? What do I want to do? I like to show up. I, I, I want to show up to, to deals that Alan has put together, meet with the prospect, meet with the client, have that negotiation, meet with them, close the deal and walk the hell away. That's what I want to do. Okay. I want to show up to the mastermind call like I'm showing up here today. Uh, press record, start talking, press in and be done. I don't want to promote the event. I don't want to process the all the content, there's about a 85 pieces of content that come out of this call every single week because of the system that I built in the back end. I don't want to do any of that crap, okay? I want to show up on a stage, pick up the mic, speak, set down the mic, and walk away, okay? I want to spend time with a one-on-one client. Now, this isn't about me. I'm just sharing with you. I've, you got to get crystal clear as a business owner, Okay. What ultimately do you want to do in your business? Okay. Every single thing else. And I'm just going to talk directly to you because a lot of you are listening to this recording. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you straight up. If your goal is not to get to the point of having other people do the crap you don't want to do, you're not a business owner. Okay. All you've done is you quit your job and now you own your job. Okay, because if you think about when you worked for somebody or if you ever worked for somebody, there's a lot of stuff you did that you didn't want to do. Okay, and I can tell you, and Alan can agree, Alan knows he's been in business long enough is I'm going to outsource, delegate or automate the things I don't want to do. That's why we work our asses off as business owners and create the amount of money that we create and why we think about it's like I had a conversation with somebody the other day. It's like I'm a business owner. You know, I think about my business 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can't shut this thing off. And it's true. <laughs> After you've been in business for a long time, everything, you look at things differently. Everything's an opportunity. Everything's a sale. Everything's an angle. Everything is like, you know, it's just the days weave in with one another. Right. And so this is the year 2021. We've been through COVID. This country went through a massive amount of challenge. And I know this uh, because we have, me and my wife have some friends going through some tremendous challenges right now. Tremendous challenges. To the point of, I don't know how I I can't take much more of this. Yeah. But it's right where they need to be because it's in the biggest challenges that we have and the darkest moments of our life that we realize, wait, I'm breathing. I have a roof. I have food to eat. I have my needs. They're all met. I don't have my wants. And it's at that moment that we get spiritually connected with whatever our spiritual connection is. And we realize, you know what, what is the next step? This challenge that I'm going through is going to help me take on this mountain, this Goliath, if you will, in the next phase of my life. But if everything is just, 
oh, everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's great. Life is good. Tiptoe through the tulips. You know, if everything is just freaking like, you know, tipsy, you know, topsy-turvy every single day, we're never going to grow as human beings. So when you look back at Q2 and you go into Q3, what are the biggest lessons you learned? What are the ways? What are the just pick one? What is the number one thing that you're going to challenge yourself to do this next quarter that's going to force you to grow? You know, and if you're a business owner, and I'm talking specifically to you business owners out there that have never gone down the road of building a company that runs by itself or have had employees, get out of your own way. Okay. Otherwise, why not just shut it down? Go back to work for somebody, get benefits, holidays, paid days off, vacation, and not have to worry about all the stress. But if you truly want to be a business owner, then guess what? Do this four list exercise. I'll send it to you for free. 916-741-0596. Just say four list business exercise, first and last name and email. I'll send it to you and do it. You don't need my help. Just do this. And the things that you cannot outsource right now, guess what? Go out and sell and create money to hire somebody to do that crap. You know, it's like, I don't know about you, Alan. It's like, I don't like spending money in my business. I like spending money <laughs> on me because <laughs> my wife, I, I can't, I got to be honest and transparent here, right? I like spending money on me and the things I want, like golf, cigars, all this other stuff. But spending money in my business, man, I'm a cheap dude. You know, I don't want to spend money in there. But I know this, if I don't take advantage of, uh, my wife's talents and the business that she's building over the next 90 days, I would be stupid. Okay. Because there's a crap ton of crap in my business I'm doing right now. I don't want to do, I don't, I don't have any joy fulfillment. I wake up in the morning, I see it on my task list. I'm like, I freaking don't want to do that crap. And you know what? I don't have to. And so what that's going to do, and I'm talking to you business owners out there, including myself, what that's going to do is it's going to free me up to do more of the things I actually love to do. Okay. Because I can have her and her team set up situations where they just line me up with appointments. All I got to do is show up and talk and consult and close the deals and things like that. But if I don't make that move and that transition, guess what? I'll be bitching about this at the end of September. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, you know, just off on that tangent, John, about getting out of your own way. My first wake up call to that, my first real wake up call to that was in 2009. And I had, I, had, I was in an office, I had about 12 full time employees. And my brother in law from Michigan came down and came by the office one day just to say hi. And he spent about 15 minutes in there just sitting in the front reception area, watching the interaction between myself, my, my, staff, a couple of clients that walked in, just all of it. And then, you know, I didn't think anything much about it. Then we went to dinner the next night and I, I was, you know, kind of feeling proud of, of what I had built over the years. And, I, you know, I asked him what his impression was, you know, what'd you, what'd you think of the company? And he looked at me and without hesitation, without reservation, he said, um, you built a hornet's nest for yourself you built a hornet's nest for yourself. And yep. he said, eventually you're going to have to figure that out. And I was, uh, I guess the, the British word is gobsmacked. I did. I had, you know, I had no idea that I would, that I was really perceived that way by somebody else that was successful in his own field. And, you know, boy, he was, he was so right. It wasn't even funny because, you know, my days were, I worked for, I worked for my business. I was a slave to it. And, and I'm, I'm not to the point where I want to be by, you know, here we are in 2021, all these years later, I'm not to the point where I want to be, but boy, back then it was, it was just a different world and it was brutal. Mm -hmm. It was brutal. We had, we had all this business, all this noise, but man, I, I just had to guide and support every single facet of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, how should I, how should I respond to this? How should I do this? What's the best way to do this? just constant and and hornet's yeah. nest was an apt analogy and if i did if i hadn't 
made some changes, um, then boy, I would have I would have fried out a long, long time ago. And you know, as a as a business owner, um, keep your well being at the forefront because if you don't take care of yourself and 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 fix the deficiencies that you have, then you can't be effective in moving and guiding. You know, you can't you can't steer the boat. You yeah. can't you can't do it. And you know, the e- go go read the e myth again if you if yeah. if you haven't already. That that's the that's the best thing to do there. Re- yeah. Remember why you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, begin with the end in mind. Um, and you know, it's like the one thing I do want to point out as you were talking and the thought went through my mind is like, you know what, dude, you're gonna you're gonna celebrate twenty five years. Yeah. this year right and what that tells me is you haven't had to answer to a boss ask for a lunch break ask for a vacation can you you know go and spend time with your daughters in 25 years yeah you know and maybe you're not making the money you want to make or maybe you're not achieving the goals that you want to make but the fact is is you don't have to answer to nobody right yeah you know? And so that is probably the number one goal that most business owners have when they first start. But now at some point you get to the point where it's like, you know what? It's like the couple that sat here in my office yesterday. It's like, we just want to go away <laughs> for, for two weeks, three weeks and not have to take our laptops. Yeah. If, we have great clients. We have great business. We've been doing this for 23 years. This is what they were telling me. It's like, but man, we have to take our laptop. We have to work. We can't unplug. We can't do any of that crap. You know? And, and it's like, you know what? That's the majority. It's the majority of the business owners out there. And that's fine. Hey, if, if you, I am not knocking it. Okay. Some businesses Business owners, it's like, hey, man, I've been in business for 35 years. It's like my client up and ready. Okay, we just finished up our our contract, went through five months, accomplished all the goals that I wanted to get accomplished, and she's super duper happy. But she wanted to create a structure where she could, she and her husband can leave for two or three weeks and not have to worry about the company, not even have to check in. And so I sent her away for two and a half weeks, and she checked in maybe one time and. Uh, actually twice. And the only reason she answered the phone was because the operations person was going crazy and just needed to vent. You know, but she's like, I ain't doing shit while I'm gone. She left her laptop back at the, uh, at, at the office. And she's like, dude, you helped me accomplish all this. I, I, I can't thank you enough. You know, right. and I'm moving my office from upstairs with all the other people down to the basement. That way I don't have to be involved. <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's works. like whatever works, man. But she's been in business for 35 years and everything, you know, she'd love to be involved, be involved in the day-to-day operation, be the center of attention, controlling all the puppet master stuff. But at some point, and it could take you five years to get there, could take you 20 years to get there, could take you 25, 30, 35, whatever it is for you, it is for you. But at some point, you get to the point as a business owner where you're like, I, I want my freedom. Just want my freedom. Yeah. And that is the tipping point, you know, where strategies, systems, the business system audit, virtual assistance, all this type of stuff really, really matters. And so with that said, we are out of time, but I do want to say hi to Eric Adams. Eric Adams is going to start a tip chapter in Folsom, California. He is, a mortgage uh, lender out of Folsom, California. Say hi, Eric. Hey, sorry for the late uh, join. I got your text. I had a meeting at two, so join us. Yeah, no worries. I know you guys are ending right now, but I wanted to check it out. Yeah, no worries, man. We're here every single Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, The only reason that this call will never, and this is for everybody listening to the recording, the only reason this call will never happen is if me and Alan are in Cabo vacationing together. (laughs) 
okay. and in which case right. i might outsource it to alice and she can, wait wait she'll be with me in cabo maybe right. we can find yeah, somebody else to run the call you'll be in trouble um, <laughs> no. and that, so Eric, that's awesome. And I know we are wrapping up. I, 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 I gotta, I gotta fit this in my first, my first client of real substance in my business many, many, many years ago was a, was a mortgage guy and he owned a company called Westside Mortgage. And one day a local realtor did him wrong on a deal. And that night he called me up and said, come over, I'm going to make you dinner and drinks. And I did. And he made dinner and he made a lot of drinks. And we spent five hours that evening buying up domains centered around this guy's business related to his business name and redirected it to my client's mortgage site. So that was, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun, but uh, I, uh, I got exposed to, it was a lot of great memories back then and uh, good job on a good job on starting a chip, a tip chapter. That's, that's outstanding. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. It's going to be huge, man. We, uh, I got the document. I'll connect with you tomorrow and we'll get that set up. So I've got all the step-by-step what we need to do to get that going. Uh, and if you're listening to this recording, you want to start with a tip chapter pretty much anywhere in the United States. Um, just let me know. It's a networking group. Just look up with uh, go to the tip, uh, just look up the tip.com. Lots of information, 213 chapters nationwide. You should start one in Nashville, man. So I can help you do that. Um, cause now that, um, um, Dan Rogers is out there. Um, yeah, a good power partner there. So, so the only thing I would encourage you with going into this next quarter is, is reevaluate your entire business. If you want the quarterly business uh, uh, review that I give to all of my clients, just send me a text. Send me a text at 916-741-0596. 916-741-0596. Put your first name, last name, email, say QBR. That way I know what to send you. I'll send it to you. If you want to get a hold of me, great. If not, you there's trust me. I give this to my client; they can walk themselves through it. I just hold them accountable to it. So, but do this every single quarter, and every single quarter your business will be more and more and more. Alan knows this. Alan's been with me for five years. Every single one of my clients, with the actually every single one of my clients last year, they grew every quarter because I encourage not force let me choose my words correctly here i encourage them to look at their plan and their goals on a regular basis so it's just the best practice that we all need to do as business people it's called baseline strategy and and you just evaluate what what is it that you did in the previous quarter uh in the area of uh spiritual family uh fun uh finance business uh, your relationship with your spouse or significant other, your children, uh, your friends, whatever it is that you want to measure, your health, your fitness, what were the results for Q2? For April, May, and June, what were the results? Don't lie to yourself. This is the biggest mistake people make is they lie to themselves. They want to fudge the numbers. And the only thing is, is it hurts you. Doesn't affect anybody else. Not going to affect my life, Alan's life, anybody on this call's life. It will not affect your relatives, your children, nothing. The only person that's going to affect by lying to yourself is you. Okay. So the more honest you are with yourself, the better better it's going to be. What were the numbers? Is that good? I don't know. Yeah. Too many people live for other people's goals. Too many people live to impress other people. What about you? Is it important to you? You know, and then ask yourself, okay, here we are. I'm going to shoot an arrow September 30th, right? 12 weeks from now, September 30th, 2021. Do I want to, what areas of my life do I want to improve? And if you can just improve by one, just one thing. Clark Broom taught me this back in 1992. Too many people take on big goals too many goals at once. Why not just pick one? What's the one thing that you can focus on over the next 90 days? And I'll leave you with this. Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player, in my opinion, of all time. And one of the things that he was a master at is incremental growth. And every single off season, it's a true story. Every single off season, he would go back and watch hours and hours of film. He would have a notepad. Okay. He would make little notes of the little things that he did not like about his game that he would like to see an improvement on. 
Okay. So he had this massive list after spending hours watching himself play. And then he would not, don't want to do that. No, don't want to. He would come up with the number, just one, not 25. He would go, what's one thing I can work on this off season that would have the biggest impact on all these other things. That's all he did. It's a true story. And he would whittle it down. So one year was his left hand. He figured out that he was weak with his left hand. He's like, man, if I could just improve my left hand, coordination, change everything in my game. So he hired a coach, hired a mentor, and all he did the entire offseason was work on that left hand. The next year, it was his strength training. It's all he did the entire offseason. He worked on developing more strength and flexibility. And every single offseason, that's exactly what he did. That's how he maintained and became the greatest basketball player of all time. You and I are going into a new quarter. Go back and look at what was your game that you played in every area of your life in Q2. And then ask yourself, what are the things that I want to improve on? And then whittle it down. Who gives a rip if it impresses somebody else? I, I will definitely, I want, I want to throw that out there because too many people set goals. They go after objectives. They go after things that they, that, that hey man, this person's going to like me or, or this person's going to this. Screw that. What is the one thing that's going to give you the most happiness? It's going to have the biggest impact in your life over the next 90 days. Find a mentor, find a coach, find five books on the subject and focus and laser focus on that for the next 90 days. And guess what? 90 days from now, you'll be better. And then 90 days from then, you're going to be better. Clark Broom taught me this back in 1992. I was homeless, drug addict, dropped out of high school, all this stuff when I was 17. Okay, met Jacob Chia, his his mentor, 1990. Listen to Clark Broom teach this on stage in 1992. And I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, my life has improved every freaking year since 1992. Definitely not where I want to be. I will never get to my full potential until I die. Okay. But I will tell you this, a whole lot better than I was in 1992. A lot better than I was in 2020. You know, and you can do the same. So pick one thing that you can work on over this next quarter. If, I, I'm begging you and pleading you to do that. One thing that you can work on over this next quarter to have the biggest impact in your life, find the mentor, the coach, the, the, you know, whether you pay for them or not, find something where you can focus on getting better over this next quarter and, and everything's going to change for you. I promise you that. Okay. So I hope this has been valuable. Go out and make it happen. I know we went over, but uh, it's such a great subject and I could talk for hours on this because it's just my favorite subject. So go out and make it happen and we'll see you here next Wednesday. Have a great one. Thanks all.